We begin with breaking news at this hour. Kootenai Health is nearing capacity, may actually have to transfer patients elsewhere as coronavirus activity surges across the area. The overall hospital census for patient care shows the hospital is now at 99% capacity. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us. I'm Whitney Ward. Welcome, everyone. I'm Mark Hanrahan. Taylor Bido is joining us live from Kootenai Health tonight, and we want to get straight to him for the latest on this situation. Taylor? Well, yeah, you know, earlier this afternoon, I spoke with one of Kootenai Health's top doctors and she made it pretty clear. She said that the hospital is at a tipping point. This situation with capacity is unprecedented for them. And to make matters worse, some employees are getting sick with coronavirus, too. And as soon as we get somebody discharged, there's somebody filling that bed. A rapid rise in COVID-19 cases in North Idaho has doctors at Kootenai Health dealing with a sad reality. As of Wednesday morning, the hospital's capacity was at 99%, and doctors were struggling to find room to place new patients coming in. There isn't an empty bed if a new patient comes into the emergency room um, and needs to be admitted. There is not a bed available uh, for those patients to be placed. So we're having a, a backlog of patients that need care. Um, that other facilities are asking us to accept and transfer. That's Dr. Karen Cavill. She's Kootenai Health's chief physician. Dr. Cabell says the situation is unprecedented for them. It's becoming real really fast, and we really just need to plea with public um, to be as careful as possible, stay home if you're sick. To be clear, all beds in the hospital are full. As of this morning, Kootenai Health had 31 patients hospitalized for COVID-19, and a third of them required critical care. Those patients are between 40 to 90 years old. Now, while they've sought to transfer patients to free up space, Kootenai Health says that other regional hospitals have declined to accept those patients or have been very selective. For that reason, Kootenai Health is now considering sending some of their patients to hospitals in either Seattle or Portland. Now, on top of that, the hospital is facing a staff shortage because workers are coming down with coronavirus themselves. Some of those employees aren't sure if they contracted the virus either at work or in the community. Meanwhile, when it comes to the hospital's own COVID-19 testing, Kootenai Health says they're at the highest rate of positive tests since the pandemic first started. That's having a real effect on their emergency room and other areas. We are not um, turning anybody away and telling them to go uh, to another facility. Um, however, there may be long lines and uh, we may end up having to treat patients in um, locations that we normally don't treat them. And we also asked about elective surgeries and if those could be delayed or canceled. A hospital spokeswoman told us that they're doing their best for now. However, she said that there's a possibility in the future that elective surgeries could be canceled if staff members in those departments are needed in other areas. Guys? Taylor, quick question. Have hospitals in Seattle and Portland responded to this? Yeah, you know, Mark, we actually looked into that and UW Harborview Medical Center said that they haven't received any requests yet and there are no patients in Portland as well. The hospital has said they are trying to avoid that. All right, Taylor, thank you very much. We also want to quickly take a moment just to look at the latest data from the Panhandle Health District as we kind of examine the trends over the last few weeks. So here's where it stands right now. Yesterday, the Health District saw its biggest spike yet, 141 new positive cases in just 24 hours. That is the highest daily number they've seen since the entire start of this pandemic. If you look, those numbers have been going nowhere but up over the last few weeks. It was 119 cases one week ago, just 44 two weeks ago. But of course, not everyone who gets COVID needs to be hospitalized. So it's important to look at that metric as well. So for hospitalizations, those numbers have also been climbing, just not as dramatically. As of yesterday, there were 33 people hospitalized in the Idaho Panhandle, 29 a week ago and 24 two weeks ago. But again, it's not necessarily the number of beds in a hospital that matters. It's the staff who take care of you, as well as the specialized equipment used to treat you. And tonight at Kootenai Health, again, they are essentially reaching that capacity. All right. Meantime, Spokane County recorded 102 new coronavirus cases and two new deaths today. So we wanted to know if Providence is also nearing capacity. Graham 2's Amanda Rowley is following that story tonight. 
Good evening. Providence Healthcare confirmed with us this afternoon. Its hospital capacity is not full and in fact, it continues to admit new patients. We also received confirmation from MultiCare. They say at this time Deaconess and Valley Hospitals also have capacity to treat patients and continue to care for the community. Now, earlier today, we did receive a statement from Providence Healthcare. It says it is continuing to work with its statewide partners to balance pace patient numbers across area hospitals. It adds, although patient census is high, it remains open and available for care. Providence spokesperson Jennifer Semenza told me she does not know why Kootenai Health would say Spokane hospitals cannot accept any more patients, even though both Providence and MultiCare say they can. Now, we also received this situation report from Spokane Regional Health District. According to its latest report, hospital supplies and staffing levels Levels are adequate, but not without challenges. It says hospitals are seeing a capacity increase just this week. The availability of beds and in intensive care units and medical surge floors are stressed, even though total occupancy remains well below the Washington State health care system's readiness targets. Now that includes an occupancy of less than 80% of used beds for patients and less than 10% of beds used by suspected and confirmed COVID-19 cases. Now at this time, Providence says there are no discussions on canceling elective surgeries because of their hospital capacity status. Reporting in Spokane, Amanda Rowley, CREM2 News. As of today, we have 17 ongoing uh, outbreaks in long-term care facilities and four that are new within the past week. That is Spokane's regional health officer, Dr. Bob Lutz, who now says over 44 long-term care facilities in Spokane County have had a coronavirus outbreak. But Dr. Lutz also provided a little further information today and some insight on the status of COVID-19 across the county. Dr. Lutz says community spread is occurring. Our incidence rate has been more than double what it was compared to back in July. Long-term care facilities, again, are the consistent sectors that Lutz is seeing outbreaks in. As far as other trends, though. But, you know, outbreaks as they're defined, I have them just across all sectors. And so there's nothing that stands out right now at this point. So Lutz adds that because cases are rising across the board, it's difficult to narrow down specific sectors, though he did attribute large gatherings as adding to those case spikes. Meantime, in Whitman County, they are reporting two new COVID-19 deaths today. Two men between the ages of 60 to 79 years old died. That brings the county death total to nine now. Whitman County also reported two new positive test results today. And new cases include a man under 19 years old and a woman between 20 to 39 years old. Well, Washington is announcing its interim coronavirus vaccine distribution plan. The Department of Health says it'll be distributing an FDA-approved FDA safe and effective COVID-19 vaccine once it's available. Here's what was released today. The interim COVID-19 vaccination plan. It focuses on equitable distributions. Health officials say the process will require a phased approach. Yesterday, Governor Jay Inslee said health care workers will be a top priority for receiving the vaccine. The Department of Health anticipating a limited supply early on, and the CDC estimates that Washington will receive 2% of the supply. That means coverage for anywhere from 150,000 to 450,000 people in the first two months of distribution. California, Oregon, they also released their vaccine plans earlier this week. All right, let's take a quick break and talk about the weather. Also a really important story here. We've seen the mountain snow already starting to fall across the inland northwest. Now we know the valleys are going to start to see it soon. And now uh, meteorologist Thomas Patrick is in to let us know we're getting a much better idea of just how much. Yeah, exactly. As we are closer now to the event, which is this Friday, now we have a more precise idea of how much snow may be in the works for most of our areas. With that being said, the National Weather Service has already issued a winter storm watch ahead of this system 48 hours in advance. So basically all of our northern areas, including Spokane and Coeur d'Alene, much of North Idaho as well, expecting a broad in a broad sense, three to six inches of snow in most valleys, a little bit lower, a uh, little bit lower than that in some of our lowest elevations. So overall, our heavy snow potential say the threat for four inches of snow is in the medium category for most of those areas. And of course, the higher elevation mountains in the Silver Valley at the higher end of that category. Keep an eye on Pullman, though, it kind of straddles 
straddles the line between low and medium. That could be a uh, battleground site in terms of uh, just a little snow or perhaps a lot more snow. But that's the system that's going to be coming in extremely consistent in terms of our forecast of it basically barreling through the inland northwest during the PM hours on Friday. So not much really has changed in our forecast and we can see that colder and Arctic air already set up to our north and east. That cold front moves through tonight and tomorrow morning. That sets the stage for that snow that will be heading our way for this upcoming Friday. So coming up, going to have a city by city look at how much snow we are expecting and just how cold temperatures will get afterwards as well. We are not going to tolerate foreign interference in our elections or any criminal activity that threatens the sanctity of your vote or undermines public confidence in the outcome of the election. A late breaking announcement tonight from both the director of national intelligence as well as the director of the FBI that they have now uncovered an international effort to intimidate voters and influence the upcoming presidential election. Federal authorities say both Iran and Russia have obtained some U.S. voter registration information. Iran specifically was cited as sending fake emails threatening to come after voters unless they vote for President Trump. Officials say the goal is obviously to create distrust and spark social unrest. The FBI is now asking anyone who may have received that type of email to just ignore it, but don't spread it around or share it. Well, we are now less than two weeks away from Election Day. The Creme 2 Verify team is hard at work answering all your election related questions, including one of what's in place to stop people from voting in two different states. So let's verify. I was wondering if I have two residents, one in Spokane or Newman Lake and one in Idaho, can I still vote twice? To verify the answer to this question, I reached out to Deputy Secretary of State for Idaho, Chad Houck, and Spokane County Auditor, Vicki Dalton. What's in place to prevent me from, you know, registering in both states and voting in both states? I guess what's the answer? So it is possible for a person to be registered in two different states, but it is illegal for a person to vote in the same election in two different states. Dalton wanted to be clear, voting twice in the same election is a felony. She adds that states are getting better at catching people who do so, and they're doing that by comparing voter registration rolls, especially among neighboring states like Oregon, Washington, and Idaho. It is becoming a higher and higher probability that we are going to find a person who's voted in two different states, and it's a higher probability now that that person will be prosecuted. Now, if you're found having voted in both locations in a general election or in any election for that matter, uh, that is a classic case of voter fraud. In Idaho, Houck says the state takes several steps to prevent people from voting in more than one state. Under Idaho law, he says you must be a resident of the state and the county in which you plan to vote for at least 30 days prior to the election. When people do register in Idaho, like in Washington, voters are always asked where they were last registered so officials can contact that previous jurisdiction. And Houck says Idaho also compares voter registration rolls. And we will prosecute. Uh, the last case was between Oregon and Idaho, I believe, and it was prosecuted in Oregon because that's where the person was actually uh, living. So we can verify, yes, it is illegal to vote twice in the same election. And if you're caught doing so, elections officials in Washington and Idaho say they will prosecute. All right. Do you have something you'd like me to verify? Give me a call at that number right there on your screen and I will work to answer your questions. OK, still ahead tonight. Election Day now just 13 days away now. And while much of the focus is on the race for president, there is so much more on the ballot. So coming up tonight, our next installment of interviews with candidates running for local office. Tonight, we'll hear from Bob McCaslin. We'll be right back after a quick break.